This presentation is about radiation safety in the field of speech language pathology by Emily Dodaro and Alyssa Kennedy. There are three key factors to be considered when discussing radiation safety. The factors are time, distance, and shielding. Each of these factors will be discussed in further detail. The first factor to be discussed is time. When thinking about time, one should remember as low as reasonably achievable. Individuals should aim for no more than 3 minutes, 90 to 120 seconds optimal time of radiation exposure at a time. If possible, you should rotate assignments between staff members to decrease the amount of radiation exposure. It's important to remember, having time halves personal exposure. The next factor in radiation safety is distance. Increasing distance from the x-ray tube is one of the most effective ways of reducing exposure. The amount of radiation exposure received is inversely related to the distance one is from the source. This is what is known as the inverse square law. A thorough understanding of the inverse square law is required of all healthcare professionals employed in areas where radiation is used for either therapeutic or diagnostic purposes. The distance one stands from a point source of radiation will affect the amount of radiant energy one is exposed to, which is why it's important for SLPs to remain as far from the patient and x-ray tube as possible. Proper shielding, which will be discussed next, will help to decrease radiation exposure to more vulnerable parts of the body. The third factor in radiation safety is shielding. As previously mentioned, shielding helps to protect susceptible body organs. Examples of shielding gear include a lead apron, lead gloves if needed, lead glasses, and a thyroid collar. As you can see in this picture, this gentleman is geared up and ready to protect against radiation. Take note of the decimetry badge and ring, which will be discussed in the next slide. An additional safety precaution for radiation is a decimetry badge, or a film badge, which measures radiation exposure. As you saw in the previous slide, it is worn on the outside of the lead apron. Some facilities may require you to wear an additional badge under the apron. You should not exceed 5 REMs a year. REM stands for Radiation Equivalent Man, which is a unit measure of radiation. A dosimetry ring may also be worn by clinicians. This is necessary when doing a lot of feeding because of repeated radiation exposure to the hand. Now we will discuss procedures during a fluoroscopy. A fluoroscopy indicates ongoing ionizing radiation. The longer the exam, the longer the radiation exposure. You will need the following protective gear, lead apron, lead glove, and thyroid collar. It's important to remember that during this procedure, your back may not be protected, so you should not turn your back during the fluoroscopy. Women who are pregnant should also take extra precautions. The SLP should take the initiative to confirm with the facility radiation equipment specialist that the fluoroscopic system meets all federal and state radiation standards and is consistent with the American College of Radiology standards. Also, the SLP should confirm the fluoroscopic system has collimators, which are x-ray blocking devices, to limit the radiated field to the oral pharyngeal region, trachea, and esophagus. Now that we have discussed ways to protect against radiation overexposure, it's necessary to understand the risks if these precautions are not practiced. Overexposure to radiation can cause harmful health effects, which include cancer, birth defects, erythema, which is a reddening of the skin that resembles a sunburn, radiodermatitis, which is dry, flaky skin that doesn't heal easily, cataracts, and changes to cells including cell mutation and cell death. The ASHA website serves as a useful resource for guidelines and extra tips to practice radiation safety. First, the SLP should know the roles and responsibilities of the medical staff in conducting safe testing procedures. It is highly recommended that SLPs receive formal instruction regarding x-rays and radiation issues. Specific protocols and questions should be directed to the facility radiation safety officer. Lastly, the SLP should be aware of local agencies that have regulatory authority concerning ionizing radiation and the current recommended dose limits for radiation. SLPs should use their knowledge of radiation safety when planning and implementing procedures when radiation exposure is possible. As previously mentioned, pregnant women should take extra safety precautions during procedures involving radiation exposure. ASHA provides specific guidelines that should be reviewed and can be found at the link listed here. Practicing procedure maneuvers beforehand will ensure proper technique and safety by likely lessening procedure time. 
Lastly, it would be beneficial to take advantage of annual radiation safety programs in order to keep up to date on regulations by your State Department of Health Bureau of Radiation Protection. Here are some extra resources in case you have further questions regarding radiation safety.